Greetings, everyone. My name is Vinay. Now let's have a look at the agenda. So today we'll get familiar with administrator settings, all the options that are available under administrator settings, what an administrator can do, how we can manage users and groups. Uh, in the demo part, we'll be looking at different options that are available to edit and update information related to users and groups. And the later part of the session, we'll set up the LDAP authentication, understand how LDAP authentication works in Curator Soar. Now, we'll be working here with assumptions. We believe that you possess a fundamental grasp of IT security, and you're familiar with the basic concepts of SIM and SOAR. Now let's understand the basics of administrator settings. You can access the SOAR platform from a web browser. Uh, the supported web browsers that we have are Chrome, Firefox, Safari, and Edge. Make sure that these browsers are on the latest release or one release before the current version. Now upon login, you will see your username and SOAR organization in the header. We'll have a look at this during our demo. Now, uh, if you're a member of multiple SOAR organizations on the SOAR platform, you can switch between organizations from the menu. Documentation and support information is available by selecting the help contact in the system menu. Also, this information is available via a link on the activity dashboard page. Now, we'll move on to the demo part of this session. We'll be looking at all the options that are available under administrator settings, like uh, how to configure users and groups, assign roles to users, create new roles and organization, enabling system settings. So as you can see, this is my browser. I'll just slightly increase. Hopefully this should be good. All right, so this is our activity dashboard page as we have seen before and the administrator setting page is available here. So before I go in, so the thing that I mentioned about documentation, so like I said, on the activity page, you can see uh, there are links available here to resource library and documentation. And the other option that I spoke about help contact is from here. So I'll just quickly click here so you can see, once you click on help and support, all the information that you may require related to SOAR, like you know REST API, if you want to do advanced orchestration, site management, getting started, incident management, all of these links are readily available from the help contact option, okay? So now let's dive into administrator settings. So once you reach this page, you can see all the options that are available under administrator settings. So let's explore users. Now you can see these are the number of users uh, that we have here so far. So, uh, Display name, last login, roles, groups, status, all the relevant information related to users are available in these columns. Uh, if you wish to explore or update any information about a user, let's say we'll look at Sam Smith. So once you click on Sam Smith, you can see all the user details here. So on the left side of your screen, you can see summary and permissions, uh, all the details about this user, what's his status, his email, is he part of any groups? When was his last login? And the roles that he has, okay? So you can see uh, there are multiple roles. So if you wish to add roles based on uh, users or uh, employees operations or day-to-day -day operations uh, and they move to different roles, there's an option edit you can see here. When you click on edit, you can see the options that are available here. So if you wish to add any more roles that a user is supposed to perform, for their day-to-day -day job, you can just click here. They can see from the drop down the options that you can select and assign that role. So if you, uh, let's say this user has administrator and observer and should also be an incident creator. So you can just select that. And if once you click on save, now this user will have all the roles related to administrator, observer, and incident creator. And the right side, you can see there are workspace roles. Uh, there are this user is assigned with default workspace with incident viewer. There's incident team and IT operations. So let's say if he's not supposed to be part of uh, incident team, you can just click and you can click on save. So you can see 
the changes reflect immediately. Now, uh, if any incidents need to be reassigned, if this user no longer works on a particular incident or tasks, you can click on reincident, reassign the incident tasks, and you can search who is the relevant user who will, be, who will continue to work on that particular incident or task. And let's say this user no more belongs to this organization or has moved to a different team and doesn't work on SOAR platform anymore, you can either deactivate this user or you can delete this user. Or if this user happens to perform failed multiple login attempts to SOAR platform, they might come to you to request. So at the administrator or master administrator has the authority to reset password for users as well. Now, moving on to groups. So SOAR platform provides at the default group. I'll just quickly click on it and let's explore. So this is the name of the group, which is default group. And this group is allowed to have incident ownership and can also be a default incident owner. So uh, most of the options are pretty self-explanatory. So you highlight on the information button here and you can see what you can do with that particular option. And if you wish to assign any roles to this particular group, you can select from here and you can click on OK on the right bottom side of your screen. Similarly, you can assign roles to this particular group to make sure that they have relevant access. If you wish to add members to this default group, again, you click here and you can check which user needs to be part of this group. Now let's look at roles. So we looked at this briefly in our previous session about roles. Uh, we have global roles and workspace roles. So primarily it's categorized in these two options. Let's look at global roles. So administrator is checked here by default. So SOAR platform provides these four default roles under global roles category. Okay, so there's administrator, incident creator, master administrator, and observer. Okay, let's explore each of this. Administrator, when I click on this, you can see basic information about this and the description. So this role allows you to manage all the incidents and you can run simulations. Okay, so let's see what options does this have. The administrator role will provide you to manage wiki pages. So you can create, edit, and delete wiki pages. You can create view incidents. All the options under view incidents are available. You can manage all the artifacts. You have you you can allow permissions to artifacts. But again, this user does not have an option or the privilege to edit task name, phase, and instructions. So let's say if in your environment you feel that your administrator should have more privileges than what you see on the screen, we do not really recommend you to update or modify this particular rule. What we suggest is you can see there's an option to create role. So you can create role, give a relevant name to this role. The API name will be auto-populated. You can describe what this is, what this administrator role is going to do, and then you can update this information. So let's say this is uh, advanced administrator. So you can see the API name got auto-populated. Additional capabilities for admin. Okay. So let's say I want this user to be able to work on dashboard filters, manage wiki pages. I want him to create and view incidents. Uh, I want him to view, create simulations, edit task. I want him also to access inbox, members, owner status. But I am not interested in uh, anything else apart from these options. So they can select and you go ahead and click on save. So you can see the, hold on. So, Advanced Administrator is created here. It's auto-checked because we are on that page. So this role is now ready and you can assign it to any particular user. So uh, let's say Sam needs to be part of this. 
I will click on edit advanced administrator so this option is now available I'll click on save so this user now how has all these roles okay now we look at incident creator uh, as the name suggests you can create incident so obviously it will not have access to the rest of the options you can just create incidents so in your environment again if you feel that an incident creator is supposed to have more options apart from just create you can again use the create role option master administrator uh, like you see uh, the one that i'm logged in in right now i'm the master administrator here so i have all the options which is why you can see these tabs are visible here so if i uncheck or remove any of this it will disappear from this menu and last but not the least the observer rule uh, it's a simple it can just access all the incidents and update uh, about a member so it will have access to view and edit it can view private tasks but if you feel an observer could do slightly more than what is given again take a create role option and uh, create a relevant role and assign the relevant permissions workspace roles by default we do not see any roles here uh, but for demo session we have created one incident viewer so incident viewer this is one role which i felt should have more than what a default observer would have so i've given view incidents view action status and then i've created this role so workspaces we've looked at this also again uh, i'll just quickly look uh, run through this so so platform provides you a default workspace and uh, i have created two more workspaces so there's an incident team who is responsible. So a description defines what kind of workspace this is. So they will be working on incidents led to offense, malware, and phishing. And ID operations typically will be looking at IT help desk, laptop issues, theft management breakdown. So if you remember, in the last session, when Sam's laptop stolen incident was uh, created in the system, the SOAR platform, the incident was assigned to IT operations workspace because they are the one responsible for managing incidents related to this if you wish to create you can click on create workspace fill up the relevant option uh, network uh, this is a very important thing by default as you can see SOAR platform can be accessed by all the ip addresses in your organization but if you wish to restrict only certain IP addresses to access because not everyone works on a SOAR platform, so they need not have access uh, to this particular platform. You can restrict it by clicking on Add IP. So you can mention the IP address and net mask. You can click on Create. So the IP addresses that are mentioned in this list will be the only ones who will be able to access this SOAR platform. So make sure that you use it very wisely. organization so we'll be looking at this so these are the default options that are available under organization tab let's look at some details about this so as you can see organization information can be updated or deleted using the rest util edit or command so this organization has some default values like there's an id there's a name to this uh, there's state and zip code now i can see that address is missing uh, there is no address given to this so let's see how we can quickly add this so i'll switch to our cli so i've logged in as res admin so this is our command so sudo res util editor hyphen help so if in case if you're not aware of the options that edit org provides so you can use the help option so these are the options that are available so you can add the address address one address two city name org name state and zip so i wanted to address update the address one feature so so let's say i had updated zip earlier so i'm going to type edit org hyphen org name test which is the name of my organization hyphen address one and it should be abc okay so it'll take a couple of seconds so 
Meanwhile, you can check the other options. Let's say if you wish to update uh, the zip, if the zip, zip is not correct, you can run the same command, sudo resutil edit org hyphen org name, uh, followed by the name of the organization, hyphen zip, and provide the new value for your zip code. So once you provide that and you hit enter, it'll take a couple of seconds. And once it's done, you will be able to check that the zip got updated from the older value to the new value. If you wish to change the name of your organization, my hyphen name will give you that option. So the command is done. Let's look at this. So right now we don't see here, so I'll quickly refresh this page. All right, we are back here. So you can see the address field is now updated with the value ABC. So similarly, if you wish to change any other options and any values for these parameters, you can use the rest util edit, which is very well available here on the screen. And you can use the hyphen help option. Now settings, we will quickly look through this. So session timeout, if you want your uh, login page or your uh, log, uh, web URL to be active uh, with this session, you can change by default, it is 20 minutes. As you can see, you can edit and change to the value that you need. And uh, the important part here that you will be looking at is incident deletion. This is one thing this feature is on, so, but if you feel that incident should not be deleted at any cost, you can just turn this off. So no matter what, incidents will not be deleted. And enable LDAP authentication. This is the part that probably will be covering where we'll see how we can map our groups and you can authorize the LDAP proof from uh, the LDAP server. Uh, thread sources, these are the feeds that are available uh, for SOAR platform. Uh, we'll be looking at this in detail in our uh, next session, which will be SOAR administration part two. We'll see how do we configure all of these thread sources. Uh, notifications, yeah, as the name suggests, uh, if I'll just quickly click here, if you can see this icon here, this is the notification icon, which will show me all the activities that have been happening so far. So if this user master administrator is supposed to be notified uh, of a anything, let's say an incident, uh, there was an update to an incident or then update to a task and I want it to be notified to an administrator, it gets notified here. So as you can see, there is an assigned incident here. Let's uh, look at this. So an assigned incident is active, it's enabled. And there are two options that we can see here. One is which shows a mail icon, which means any whenever an incident is assigned, master administrator will be notified of uh, this change via email and also will be notified via a notification. If you don't wish to be notified in either of these options, you can just uncheck that and that option will be off. So let's quickly click on new notification. I'll explain this. So uh, you will give a new notification. Let's say there's an address changed. Uh, what's the type of notification this incident? So I'll just explain this. Uh, what does it really mean? So when I click, when I say I want a notification for a type incident, okay, who should receive this notification? So you can see there are multiple options, added members, added owners, members, owner, now it could be slightly confusing as to what is the difference between members and added members. So let's say you have an incident uh, and you have a team. Uh, let's say there is SOC analyst and there is a team lead and there is manager who's managing all the incidents. Okay. Now managers don't really work on incidents, but they would like to be aware of what is happening on an incident and you would want them to be notified of any changes that happen. So uh, by default, SOC analyst would be a part of the incident. Uh, team lead would also be a part of the incident, but manager may not be. So if I select added members, so while the incident was created, obviously manager was not part of it. Later on, the manager requested to be a part of that incident. So when you create this notification and if you select added members, only the manager would get notified out of this. By that, what I mean is the members who got added after the incident that was created are the ones who will be receiving this notification if because I, I do uh, the members who are already a part of it need not be notified because they are working day in day out. Although if you wish them to be notified, 
you can again select members as well. So members and added members of that particular incident change will be notified. Okay. Now there's an option trigger on creation. So whenever there's an object is removed or created, I can select that option. So let's say if an object is created, so you can see option six and seven gets activated. So you want the users to receive an email by default. If you have configured mail server, it will go uh, send an email by mail server. And if you wish them to be notified by system notification, you can check this. Okay. So there's one more option here, 5B. Let's look at this. There's a condition here. So uh, let's say address is changed. Uh, any, anyone uh, changes the address, I would like to be notified about it. So I click on create. I'll quickly go to incidents. Mm, let's say Sam's laptop is stolen. I click on details because that's where all the information is available. Uh, the address mentioned is ABC building 456, but I, it turns out Sam's laptop was not stolen uh, in that particular building. It was stolen in 999. That's the name of the building that uh, where he works. So just click on save. And just refresh this. So this is Sam's login. So all the notifications related to an incident, they get uh, they appear here. So the notifications, you can see there was some information that was updated, task has been collected. So Sam got notified all of these notifications here. So if you click on view all notifications, all the information will be available here. All right, let's go back to our administrator settings. Now there's one more setting that's uh, not visible here is the system settings. Okay. Now how does system setting comes into picture? What what does it really offer? So system settings offers you information about licenses, system permissions, system health, and block types. Now where can we look at this? I'll quickly go to this admin. So this is the command. So as you can see. Uh, sudo recital new user, you need to create a new user for the first time, okay, with relevant information and add the flag hyphen sys admin. The first user or any user that needs to have system settings needs to be added as sys admin. So once I run this command, this is the user that got created. So you can see on the right side of your screen, there is a system settings option available. Okay, so License information, like I said, anything related to license, all that information uh, appears on this page here. System permissions, so these are the users by default who have access to manage system settings. Okay, now we know that apart from this, no other user seems to have access. So what I would like to do is I'll select from the users, Sam, you can see Sam appears here, right? Okay, it seems like probably this could be a little shorter. I'll just increase the font size. All right, so Sam Smith is here. So I want him to manage system settings and manage system permissions. So I want him to have this. I'll click on save. So this got saved successfully. I'll switch back to Sam's login. I'll just refresh this once. So, okay, before I refresh, he, he doesn't have this option. He just have my settings, okay? I'll just refresh this. I'll come back here. We'll look at the next part. Uh, system diagnostics. So you can enable diagnostics. Uh, there is functional level locking that's available. All that information gets saved in client.log file. So you can enable this. Uh, you also have an option to enable tracing. 
you wish to have log SQL trace, you will get that information as well. There is a timer option that's available as to for how long you want the trace to run. But remember one thing that these tools can cause significant performance degradation. So our advice, please use this wisely. Disable them as and when you don't need them. Okay. And last but not the least, the block type is. So by default on SOAR platform, if you happen to perform 100 failed login attempts, that IP, particular IP from where you're trying to access the SOAR platform will get blocked and will appear on the screen. Okay. This will be blocked by default for 60 minutes and will also get permanently blocked. So if you wish to unblock, you can come to this page uh, of the user who has system settings option and request them to unblock that IP so that they can again access the SOAR platform. Now let's come back to Sam's login here and there you see. He only had my systems. Now he has system settings as well. I had given him two options. So he has system permissions in which he can just add these settings. So he has system settings and he can add or remove any user from the system permissions. All right, uh, that comes to the end of this first part uh, about all the administrator settings. I believe uh, you were able to capture all the uh, information that you can about administrator settings. Uh, feel free to deploy SOAR and explore all of these options.